Good afternoon. <laughs> Waking you up. Uh, good afternoon on day four of day one at reInvent. This afternoon seems to be having a toll on the audience. <laughs> um, I wanted to start with a question to the audience, actually. Who has been on Werner's keynote this morning? Quite a lot. So one takeaway that I took from that keynote, apart from architecting frugally and sustainably, is a phrase that was on one of the slides that said, <clears throat> The worst phrase in English is, we have always done it that way, right? And that brings me to the topic here. Our aerospace industry, aircrafts, are in desperate need to attack sustainability and become more sustainable. <clears throat> there are more than 800 aircrafts retired every year. That's a lot of parts and aircraft. And so, Capgemini, together with AWS, has built a solution to track these parts, to inventorize these parts, to help the aircraft industry retire, recycle, refurbish these parts. And we are really blessed to have the business owner and the technical owner of this solution here. And they will dive deep on what's the rationale of building the solution, how has it been built technically, how are we using AI <coughs> to track the parts? And there's a bit of Gen AI, of course, as well. So over to you, Mathieu. Thank you. Uh, so in terms of agenda, uh, first we will uh, introduce how the ID came from. Uh, we'll explain the solution, for sure. Uh, where we are today, and also the ambition for the platform. So to start uh, with some figures first to, for, for you to understand uh, the ID behind. So, as just you mentioned, huh, there, there are plenty of aircraft which are retired every day, every, uh, every year. So, just in terms of number, there is 20% of aircraft today that are older than 20 years old. And an air aircraft are retired at 25, 30 years old, something like that. So, basically, there will be plenty of aircraft in the future that will be retired. In terms of recyclability, uh, today, there is something like 90% of an aircraft which is recycled. So, it's good. Uh, but when we co come at the part level, uh, there is less parts that are remarketed. So basically, uh, there is uh, an opportunity to gross the number of parts which are put back on the second end market. It is what we try to address with this project. And, uh, and at the same time, so uh, the ambition for that is to try to save tons of CO2, for sure. So if we dismantle the aircraft in the right way, we think we do something positive. And if we use more parts at the same time, so we will avoid tons of raw material extraction. So basically, the idea is to improve the way we are using what is existing today. So first, uh, for everybody to know, uh, you can think that aircraft, maintenance, papers, etc., are digital, so it's true. But behind that, there is still papers. So basically, you can't fly an aircraft if you don't have the papers. So it's really important for us. And it's where we place the solution. So, uh, so Claudio will then explain how it is working. But to make it simple, we use AI and machine learning uh, to, to track the records and to be able to, to address the back to birth of parts and to, uh, to, to make sure that the traceability issue of parts are addressed and we get everything to be able to use the parts. So you see the four domains uh, we, we, we try to address. So the first one is, again, reuse. So if we have the traceability, we are able to reuse the part, so it's what we try to do. Uh, at the same time, the repair. So again, to make the proper repair on an aircraft, you need to know the history to do something good. So thanks to the AI module, we are improving the way to repair parts. Uh, resell, so again, if we have traceability, we are able to put parts on the market, so we are able to resell it. So it's a, a new source of revenue for sure, but at the same time, we use something existing. And the last point is recyclability. So we created a solution along with AWS. So it started two years ago. Uh, the development of the solution started one year ago. So the, the solution lifecycle for optimization I said, has been tested, so we will show you the first results. And the ambition for us is to put this solution on the market early 2024. And uh, 
What is behind, so again, uh, you see on the title, is about circular economy. So what we try to promote on this project is to transition from linear to circular economy. So basically, linear model is when we destroy value, circular is when you improve and you preserve the value. So it's a, a way for us to improve how we manage the maintenance of parts and that how we continue to use the parts. So it's uh, ambition encouraging circular economy. And Claudio will explain how it is working. Thanks. So we started, as Matthias said, we started about a year ago uh, to develop this new platform. Uh, and uh, what we knew, of course, we knew the business. Uh, uh, in Capgemini, we have a division on that. Uh, Matthias knows very well the business. I didn't personally. But we knew perfectly the business. We knew some requirements. Uh, as you saw, uh, an aircraft could have 300,000 documents and pages, uh, and we need to analyze in few minutes, so at least, or max one hour, all these documents. So we knew that we had to do some tremendous scaling in our platform. We, we knew that, of course, we have to use serverless because it was the easiest option for us, uh, and we knew that we want to use uh, AI service uh, of AWS. And uh, that's an HLD of what we have realized. That, uh, what we didn't know was what kind of AI and what, uh, what and we, of course, nobody was expecting what's such a huge improvement on generative AI that we saw in the last year. So, but we were expecting something. We didn't know, of course, we are expecting something. So when we started, we tried to create something that was agile. And when I say agile, I mean, on both our team is arranged in a agile way. We have 15, 20 people working on that uh, and uh, ag uh, arranged with uh, regular meetings, uh, daily, weekly, something that you probably uh, know. And uh, we have an agile infrastructure too. We have a, a created an agile infrastructure. Everything here in this infrastructure is deployed with CDK. Everything is deployed using a CI, CD. So everything is ready for any change. And the most important part of where we spend most of the time was step function because we wanted to create an automatic workflow to get the best of the different AI that we want to use. Right now we are using three, four different AI services here in this platform. So the most complex part was to create and automate uh, this workflow on, on AWS. And that's what exactly what we did, uh, what we realized. And just to give you an idea, here we have uh, a React front end for a web interface, uh, some REST and GraphQL API. Storage, open search is the most important thing because we store there all the metadata information that we extract from our documentation. Cognito, plus, of course, a step function. That's a very high level uh, picture of the step function. If you want more details, scan the QR code. That there you can find a, a blog post that we published last week on the uh, AWS APN blog. And to go in details about what exactly we did uh, with, with Amazon. But the, 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 what we wanted to create uh, was something easy. And uh, to describe the process, I mean, I remember, I always remember the first call that we did with Amazon Air, the airline of Amazon. And, uh, and uh, they wanted to test our platform. We showed the platform they wanted to test. And the question was, how can we share with you the data? What are the API that you need to implement? What, what, what do you need uh, to to, uh, to test uh, the platform. I say, just give us file. We don't care about the API. Of course, we have REST API, but just give us files on a zip file. Uh, put everything in, some, in a one huge zip file, 20 gigabyte file, and give us. Okay, what's the format that you prefer? What are the folders that are inside the zip file? Again, we don't care. Put everything in a zip file, upload on the platform, and we will do, we'll analyze all the files, we will connect together all the files, we will indication uh, about uh, what you can reuse, suggestion, and possible problems on the, on the documentation that maybe you are missing uh, on that part. That's what we have realized. And to give you an idea of the, the service that you use for the AI, so you upload the file on S3, we unzip all the files, then we do OCR with TextRat for all the documents, 300,000 documents on average per airplane. Then with the output of TextRat, uh, we have uh, um, 
a, a SageMaker inference endpoint deployed. Of course, we train uh, the model. It's a BERT model. We train with our data, with, with the data that our customer share with us. And then, with the information that we obtain by, by SageMaker, we have a classification of the document. We highlight the 15, 20 documents that are mandatory to reuse the airplane. And, and for these 15, 20 documents, uh, we extract the information. How we extract the information? We use some additional features of the extract uh, that basically are forms uh, and queries. Uh, we had some custom code, and spoiler, we added even the, uh, the generative AI as soon as Amazon released Bedrock in production. We implemented, and right now we have in production Bedrock uh, to do some specific data extraction. That it works so well, and I will have a slide later. So open search is the heart of our system because we store all the information there. And once that we have stored information, we will run some custom script to really understand if you have all the documentation required for, for, for your part, uh, if you have some missing, uh, uh, missing stuff, uh, if uh, uh, you can improve in some way. And uh, here you can see a video of the platform, basically you just need to upload the file, wait until everything is, is executed. And first results were pretty good. We did an MVP, we, we created an MVP in a very fast way because of the service of Amazon, the serverless, the automation that we have and our experience on the business. And first result was amazing. I mean, we have a lot of data that we collect uh, under the airplane, and basically pe people are writing, uh, with hand, uh, are writing data on papers, uh, and we extract something that I barely see, I barely understand when, when I see with my, my own eyes. And the platform is just a web application, pretty simple. Here you can see the results. Honestly, right now, are much better than this, uh, because, because we want to even to add the possibility to improve automatically in the algorithm. And when improve means that in case of misclassification of any documents, we, the user can change the classification and we, re, we use this information to retrain our models and improve it. So that's what we have realized and we are pretty, uh, we are pretty proud of that. And, uh, but of course, uh, main problem, uh, is over the security. We added this slide a few weeks ago because, of course, during these weeks and during the event, we had a lot of discussion with a lot of customers, and AI is something new for most of us, and most of us have, have doubts about security. And we want to give to our customer the best platform and the best security. So first of all, of course, we start from, from the basic stuff. So, the well architecture review, we are a well architecture reviewer. We follow the well architecture framework. We did two reviews, one on the Capgemini side, one on the Amazon side. And what we created, we created a platform there. It's fully encrypted, at rest, in transit, follow all the guidelines, and it's the most secure that you can create on, uh, right now on Amazon. That's what's fine, but what, not, not enough. Not enough because we are talking about a SaaS solution. And a sun solution means often multi-tenant, even to have a lower cost of the, the infrastructure. So we decided that every time that we have a new customer, we don't simply do multi-tenant, but we create automatically, with, a, with an automatic uh, process, a new AWS account. We create a new AWS infrastructure, and we deploy on a separate account. This means that even if we have a bug, we won't share any data. We are sure 100% that even for a bug, we, you won't be able to access to the data of the, another customer. And that's good, that's great for, for, for security. And because it's serverless, it means that it doesn't cost a lot more. It's serv on serverless, you pay for what you use. If you have two accounts, three accounts, 100 accounts, or one single account, more or less the cost is the same. So that's great. Again, not enough. Not enough because, as I said, we want to improve our robot and we would like to use uh, the information that you can give us, for instance, mis mis misclassification or any document, uh, to train and improve our model. But some customers say, oh, we are scared about that. I'm not sure that you can, uh, can, uh, 
maybe generate some data leak because of that. So how we are managing right now? Basically, we had the two options. One that basically you can say, no, I'm not, uh, I don't allow data collection for the Amazon service because of course the problem is even on the Amazon side. So the data that we pass, for instance, to, to TextDrug is not used by Amazon to retrain their own model. And same stuff on our side. You can choose not to uh, give us this possibility and turn it off. Honestly, with the announcement that we saw yesterday and the day before, and, and I'm referring to uh, bedrock guard rates, yeah, we are, are already working on something better for the future. But for the moment, this, it's fine for our customer. This allowed to have the best security and guarantee to our customer not to share any kind of information with someone else. So Claudio explained you the technical things, the back office. Uh, so as he introduced, uh, there was early adopter on the solution. So you see the names, and there was Safran, there was Air France, and there was also Amazon Primer. So there was the early adopter. They accepted to share data with us, basically, huh, to train our model. Without them, training of the robots were impossible. So we thank them again, and uh, we propose to uh, look at the first video, uh, to, uh, it will explain why Safran decided to support the project. And the sound is not working, but you, you have the messages. There was sound. <laughs> Audio problem. We have the support team coming on stage to help us. <laughs> we will fix you. Gen AI works well, it's just a cabling issue. <laughs> <laughs> so in the meantime, again, uh, so we do some tests with Safran. They accepted to, uh, to provide landing gears information to the landing gear, see the landing gear of the aircraft. Safran is making the maintenance of the landing gear, so each time you need to do something, the airline is sending back the landing gear to Safran. So Safran is not alone to do that, and there are plenty of customers. So we get all the information of operation of the landing gears, and what we try to do with them is to get all the information. So you see on the first video some of examples and we train the robots to understand how, the, how the, the documents are formatted, where are the important information, how to extract the information, if there is something specific that the mechanics want to just to mention in the information, we need to identify this information. So this was all the, the important uh, things that we get from them to learn our model. And if the sound is not working, I will just explain the video. Uh, so what was important for, uh, for Safran in these use cases, so first, using AI is good for them because there is a productivity savings. First, so I will keep the video up. So first, there is the productivity savings. Uh, when they are, oh, when they are uh, getting uh, the landing gears from the airlines, they get the full set of documentation, so analyze the full set of documentation taking a lot of time. So first, we use AI to save time in analyzing that. Uh, they are also able to get first document from the airline to make sure that the maintenance they are proposing is the correct one. So it's also a way to improve for them the maintenance they are offering to their own customer. And then also during the maintenance, uh, thanks to this kind of solution, they are also able to identify the parts they, ca they can reuse maybe on another landing gear. So previously, they were not considering using the part anymore. So thanks to this kind of solution, they can also improve the number uh, of aircraft that can take profit of the parts and improve the, the, the reuse rate of the part, I have, as I have mentioned at the beginning. So what you see here uh, are the first results. So again, we take an example. So the, the orange uh, person is a, is a Capgemini engineering mechanic, so we have Internally within Capgemini, people that are able to inspect aircraft, huh, to make it simple. So we ask him to analyze the set of documents we get from the airlines. So we ask him, okay, let's, let's make a sample on some parts. So we make a sample on 18 parts. 
on the landing gear, you have uh, more than 200 uh, serialized parts. So it's just a, a, a short sample. And in parallel of that, we ask the robots to do the same. So two hours and a half to make the sample from the human, and less than 30 minutes to make everything uh, with the robots. So he get all the documents, he sorted everything, he extract the information, he have identified what were missing, uh, and also he package everything for the maintenance to be uh, performed in the right way. So these are the first results. Thanks to that, uh, we decided with Safran to continue exploring further the solution. We do the same with Air France, but on a complete aircraft, not only on the landing gears. Uh, and then we are also now discussing with other customers worldwide that are interested to, to use this function uh, to improve the maintenance, to improve transaction of aircraft, so from an airline to another, and also uh, improve the way they are doing procurement of parts. So when they are making maintenance, sometimes you need to change a part. So for them, they are looking on the second-hand markets about uh, possibilities. So thanks to the solution, they can evaluate more possibilities than before. And uh, so for them, it's also a way to improve the, the way they are doing the maintenance. So what next? So at the beginning, uh, I said the, the solution is still under development. Uh, it will be available in the next weeks within the AWS marketplace. So we are going to make an SSPO, so private offer, with, uh, with AWS. So everything will be available. Uh, so what you see on the screen is how it is working. Yeah? Uh, there is existing solution, uh, what we call maintenance information system, uh, where you, you can find all the information uh, on, on the aircraft. In parallel of that, you have the papers. If you get lucky, you have the PDF documents. So we get all those documents. We put everything, like Claudio explained, within the solution. We ask the robot to do the magic. I mean, still don't know how it is working, but you do. Uh, and then uh, we get structured data. So first, we identified where there is issue. Uh, we make recommendations to improve the situation. And then we package everything for, again, the landing gear, the aircraft, or, or whatever the part we are analyzing, uh, to be reinstalled on another maintenance information system to be, uh, to be reused. So it is how it is working and soon available for everybody. Uh, then, uh, what, what next? Uh, so what you see first is uh, AI to improve the way we're analyzing. So again, we save time. If we save time, we save possibly parts. So it's, uh, it's our objective. Uh, but we, we say it is not enough. Uh, so we, uh, we decided to, to look at what the document we're analyzing can bring us. Uh, so what we see on the document are um, other information. So on a maintenance um, document, you can see for sure the reference of the part, the number of flight hours uh, of use of the parts, and you can also uh, find the materials. So you can know that the, the part is about titanium, aluminium, or something like that. So it's now uh, a tricky topic. Uh, so you, you see all the, the issue we have on the supply chain to, to, uh, to, uh, to just get the appropriate material to manufacture new parts. So we consider there is also a way to improve globally uh, by just improving the way we use the materials if we cannot use any more the parts. So the system will let you know, uh, you, you put a part inside, it, it will say, okay, the part is okay, you have all the papers, it's free to use, so you can continue to use. It will let you know, okay, the part is not okay, you have a missing document or something like that, so you have something to, to manage. Or it will let you know, the part has no more value, it's over, but it's titanium made, so maybe you can do something. So with how it is working, so we make some part identification, we identify the raw materials, so uh, we are not uh, inventing something, and there is a list of uh, rare materials available. Uh, so we just map this list with what we find into the documentation to identify where we have opportunities. And then we, we are using uh, so what we call Eurocriticity, so just to identify where we have the specific uh, rare materials, and we classify again everything. So if you are a user of the platform, you can look and say, OK, I, I want first to see the part which still have a value, the part I can use on an aircraft. So it's starting. Then you said, OK, I, I don't mind. I, I just want to see where I found aluminum. And then the platform is again sorted. So it's a, it's a way for us first to improve reusable parts again. And if we are not able to reuse the parts, it's a way to improve the recyclability and to, to, to continue to avoid raw material extraction. And uh, as all the presentation of the week, uh, we present Gen.AI. So it's mandatory. A concrete example of how it is working. 
it's mandatory to have generative AI, of course. So we cannot. But first point, this is a real generative AI implemented in production right now. Our customers are using on our platform. So that, that's something that is, and it's bringing a business value. Because we, as soon as Amazon released Bedrock in, uh, in Frankfurt, about three weeks ago, we implemented, we did some investigation, of course, thanks even to Amazon and the support that always give us. We did some investigation, we tried to find out the exact use case where we can find business value. And honestly, we found out four of them. We implemented only the first one. Oh, we wanted to wait for Las Vegas reinvent. We don't want to reinvent the wheel. And, and, and we were expecting some service and that we are going to use in the next weeks, of course. So if we implemented this use case, let me explain a little. So first of all, look at step function. So that's the real complexity that we have implemented our step function. And as you can see, there are step function inside another step function inside another step function to make it more complex. But this gives you freedom. This give, it's the agility that I was saying before Basically, that, that's something that allows you to add another step inside the workflow to use a new AI service that right now it's Bedrock Cloud V2. So we are using, in this case, Cloud V2. But of course, could be Titan that now is in, in GA. Could be another service that we arrive in the next months. It's not a problem. We can easily implement. So what's the use case? Look at the, the, the picture. A, that's a form one. That's a mandatory document if you want to reuse a part of the airplane. And how you can maximize the part of the airplane, you can see that it's an ESA form one. So it's a European regulatory. And let's say that I want to reuse this part of this specific part of the airplane, not in Europe, but in the US. So if you want to do it, you can do it. But you need to double check that you have the flag, this tiny flag that the cell is 12C, and you have a sentence in the note. But it, nothing is so simple. It's not a specific sentence. It's a general sentence that we found out that is different between Ireland's. And even inside the, Ireland, the same Ireland, it's different. It could be in, even in different languages. So for this, generative AI is perfect. So we create, uh, uh, we, we tested first on the console with the help of the Amazon. We, we did some prompt engineering. We find out different sentences that we can send to Cloud V2 to extract this information. And then we use uh, in our pipeline, we implement inside, inside our step function uh, pipeline inside the Lambda, of course, uh, this additional step in, in our workflow. And we highlight to the user that it can be used in different country, or even that you have a problem. Because we found out uh, that sometimes there is a mistake on the documentation, and there is the flag, but there is no sentence. Or well, there is the sentence, but there is no flag. And that's a problem, of course. And we implemented pretty fast, uh, just to try to understand with me, uh, full-time equivalent. Uh, how many days do you think we take? I'm not thinking just to backdrop implementation. I'm thinking to the whole implementation, uh, writing the Lambda, implement the, bed, the, the bedrock API, uh, test different, uh, uh, different prompts, uh, do some automatic test, uh, and do some final test, validate and bring in production. Five days, 10 days, 20 days, try to guess. Three months? I'm sorry, it was released three weeks ago, bedrock in, in, uh, in, in Frankfurt. <laughs> Five days. Five days because, of course, bedrock is great, great service, great to use it. It's wonderful that you go on the console. We, you, basically, you, I can manually copy and paste what is the output of, of text right on, on the console and try to understand if it works and which one of the different algorithms can be used. But even because we have created a fully automated platform based on the step function, uh, deployed with CDK and with CI CD. So even on our side, we are ready to plug new service. And that's what we did. And that's the reason that we took just five days. 
And then we implemented just one, because of course, we don't have enough time. Las Vegas was coming. We didn't want to reinvent the wheel. In this case, we are not using the knowledge base. We are expecting something on the knowledge base during Las Vegas. So we wanted to wait for the other use case that required the knowledge base. And we didn't want to manage the infrastructure to, to, to do the knowledge base. So that's, that's the beauty. That's a real implementation that brings value and improves the usability of part of the airplane. <coughs> Concrete example, yes, so as Claudio mentioned, so thanks to just the generative AI, we are here able to just say, you can not only reuse the part in Europe, you can use it also in the US, so basically it's improving the way to reuse the parts. Without generative AI, we make, the re we make also the analysis on using standard AI, I would say like that, so the results were not positive. So what we do on the platform is just identifying the proper use case where we apply Gen AI, because there is a cost huh, behind, so we try to limit the cost as well, to, to do something good, again, to improve circular economy and I use the parts. How much does it cost? How much does it cost? What do you think? How much does it cost to do this type of analysis? On average, of course, because we have different uh, documents, different formats, and different sites. Give you a number, a rough number, of course. It depends on the use case. We are using the most expensive version of Cloud V2, so room for improvement. About 10 cents, a little bit less than 10 cents. Fine, acceptable, it's not a problem. Well, if I need to apply this to 300,000 documents, it's not, honestly. I mean, we cannot spend so much money. So, the, the, sorry, sorry to interrupt you, Matthew. The point that I just want to share is uh, you need to use the right AI at the right moment mm -hmm. to create a good pipeline and be sure that you are using the best, even in terms of cost, but of course in terms of performance, precision, and stuff like that. And that's what we, why we have created this platform. <clears throat> and we will end up, uh, so I would say it's not just an MVP. Uh, we are not just trying to do something. So uh, now it's becoming a real asset we have, uh, we have internally. So it's a way to digitalize uh, the aircraft maintenance, to use the latest technology to do something positive. So it, uh, it is supported by, by our CEO, Eman. And it's uh, something we continue to develop in collaboration with AWS. And, uh, and we hope that we will have plenty of customers using that uh, to, to promote circularity globally. And if you have any question, we are there with Claudio and Tom. Thank you.